She was project director for a breakthrough two-year study on the effects of transcendental meditation on ADHD and other learning disorders. Please welcome Dr. Sabrina Groswall. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be here and see a room full of educators who really are dedicating their lives to trying to improve the lives of children in their education. It's also a very tough act to follow after seeing those students there. They are representation of, of what happens with Transcendental Meditation. But I would like to talk to you a little bit about the research that we've been doing and um, what we see with children with ADHD. As was mentioned on the, on the feature, over 4 million children have been diagnosed or diagnosed at some time during their life between age 4 and 17 with ADHD. And of those, over half of them are on medication. And these are very powerful drugs, these medications. And of those, 60% continue on to those drugs into, uh, into adulthood. So now, ADHD is among one of the most prevalent chronic disorders of childhood. So it has become pervasive. The medication that is given for ADHD is primarily amphetamines. So we're giving our kids speed. And the side effects of those drugs are significant. In the three and a half or four years that I've been talking about this, it has now become recognized how serious the side effects of these drugs are so that now the FDA requires black box warnings on these medications. Some of the side effects include uh, potential cardiac event and stress. That really changed my perception of ADHD. I began to understand the degree to which stress is an underlying factor of this disorder. These children are these children are stressed because many of them have learning disorders, but stress is not just what we see in terms of right there and then, their experience in school, they've got a test, that sort of thing, but stress all the way back from early childhood, from their circumstances at home, whatever it happens to be. And children don't have an, a means of coping with their own stress. They don't have a way of managing their stress. What we found was that these children were able to settle down, and not only that, but they were experiencing the silence of their own mind for the first time. And what we found was that that ability to settle down and to relax and to throw off stress led to a cascade of other benefits, that these kids were able to focus better, they had better memory, they had better organizational skills, they had better ability to control their own anger, to initiate ta tasks on their own, their cognitive functioning was better. Uh, we'll see the next slide. Global EEG, EEG functioning also better, their executive functions, as I mentioned. The next slide. We also did assessment of their um, cognitive performance with standard cognitive tests that were used. And what we found was an increase, almost 20% increase in their executive functioning and their expressive attention and their problem-solving abilities. And all we did was have these children practice TM 10 minutes twice a day. We did no, no other intervention. We followed that up the next year in another school, in the school that was featured in the, in the PBS feature. And this time we did a controlled study. We had children that learned and children that didn't initially learn. And what we saw, if we can see the next slide, is, is, has been described about the effects on the brain. Just to show you very quickly, as you can see, the top is the control group, the group that learned TM th three months later, and the bottom group, the amount of increased brain functioning, and this is with the eyes open. These students have been meditating for three months. This is the amount of increased brain functioning before they learned TM and let three months later while doing a complex task. In the next slide very quickly, is this is the measure of the attention and focus band waves of the EEG that showed that the bottom line is the, um, is the group that had been practicing TM. The very top line is the control group. You can see the differences there within three months, which is the center uh, point there. The amount of 
improved attention and focus, and then at six months, that final point there was the intention and focus theta beta ratio moved into the normal range. Again, just 10 minutes twice a day practicing the transcendental meditation technique. So as I mentioned, over the last several years, there has been uh, increased concern about the side effects of the drugs. And in fact, just recently in the last few weeks in Britain, the British Medical Society has indicated that drugs for ADHD should be the last resort. And so now the need for some alternative is growing more and more. Transcendental meditation provides an opportunity for these students to experience that quietness, to expand their own awareness, to bring on the prefrontal cortex so that they can use the most of their brain. So just not only is this effective for students under stress, but students, students who have problems with their attention focus and with managing their own behavior. So thank you very much, and I hope that you'll consider this in your schools. What an incredible thing to have what might be such a simple approach to treating ADHD and preventing stress-related learning disorders. It's very, very inspiring to hear this research, and I hope it would bring a huge amount of hope to millions of parents throughout the country.